what can people do? Like you obviously go into houses, help find the issues. You work with another company that helps to find the issues yeah. and you actually remediate properly. But for people who don't know what to do, don't know where to start or don't have any money to fix it, what can people do if they see mold in their bathroom? Yeah, so I want to, to zoom out for one second and talk about like a really big idea. And yeah. And I'll definitely answer that question. I think for human beings, you know, we've, if you think about how we've like survived across the eons here, you know, if we have clean food, clean water and clean air, we will thrive. Yeah. Like we don't, we don't have, uh, you know, headaches because we have Tylenol deficiencies, right? Yeah. Like we've really gotten to this, we've been indoctrinated, you know, really since, uh, the early 1900s that we grow up to be factory workers. And, you know, when we have headaches, so we, we take these, these pills and everything is this, the simplicity of trying to solve, you know, human health problems with just, here's a red pill, here's a blue pill, et cetera, et cetera. The problem with that is, is that it actually can be that simple, um, without pills. We don't, we don't need pills. We're not deficient in pills, but it's about having clean air, clean food and clean water. And, you know, if you look at it from this perspective, you can't live more than a few minutes without air. You can't live more than a few days without water. You can't live more than a few weeks without food. Well, look at it in that order, right? It's really important that you have clean air, then clean water and clean food. There's no doubt in my mind. I mean, like I, I just lost 25 pounds by getting my diet together. And honestly, I have never been more mold sensitive than I have been in this past year. And like, I'm, I've, I've been detoxing again and doing all these things. And I'll tell you the, the number one thing that's been helping me is I, I've got air, more air purifiers than you can imagine. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> and I, and I like, I cleaned up my diet and really like got, you know, got my crap together, if you will. And that's, I, I, tr I feel tremendous. I have more energy than ever before. And it's just focusing on like those three things. I get water, fresh water delivered to my house. I have clean air and I'm eating clean and I'm feeling amazing. My best that I've ever felt in my mid thirties than I felt in my twenties. And so I think it's, it's the simplicity actually of clean air, clean water and clean food. That's what we need. And if we have that, we're going to thrive. So let's talk about clean air for a second. You know, what makes air not clean? Well, we have yeah. things like mold, right? We've been talking about mold. Mold's probably one of the biggest things that you can have in your house that just wreaks havoc on your air quality. And the thing about mold is it's probably one of the easier things to detect, which is why I, I look at it as like the common denominator. I could promise you if you have mold, you have bacteria. If you have mold and you have bacteria, you probably have VOCs because that means you have water intrusion. And with water intrusion, now you're having chemical reactions to your building materials and you have off gassing and you have all these other components, right? And so the simplicity, the simplicity of it is, what do we need to do? We need to address that specific issue. Now, probably money tends to be the biggest concern with really anybody. And I don't care you know, how wealthy you are, money is always a concern, right? It's, it's like, if I have a big house and I have big problems, it's gonna be big bucks. Nobody wants to spend big bucks, right? Even if I have a little house and little problems, it's still big bucks, right? And so, because it's all, it's all a perspective to where you're at in life, right? And so, Addressing money is probably the biggest concern with this. What I can tell you this is, the average person spends $400,000 being sick, okay? The average remediation costs about $30,000, the average. Now, obviously, people spend more. If you have a bigger house, you're probably going to spend more. You know, if you have big problems, you, you're probably going to spend more, but that's the average. I would spend $30,000 all day long to save myself $400,000. Because it's not just the the money that it costs being sick, but like the the mental health, the the PTSD that it causes, like the, everything. Like it, there's so much, so much that it causes that's like collateral damage, right? So when I look at it from that aspect, like I want people to understand this is like this is something that you can do that is actually the most important thing, easily yeah. because you breathe twenty thousand breaths per day. The amount of crap you're breathing in every second of every day is astronomical. If you clean that up, you will notice the biggest difference in your health guaranteed. I mean, you could probably be a testament to that, you know? Oh yeah. So I'd say And that like, was with like I said, that was with my diet like dialed in for for autoimmunity. For diet sure. Didn't change anything and the air quality in Miami in that house just murdered me 
And it I think crazy. You, you hit the nail on the head too. You're like, Hey, if I, I could eat the best diet in the world, but if my air quality is not good, I'm probably still not going to feel my best. Like maybe I'll feel better because I got my diet in check. Yeah. But I'm not going to feel my but best. Not good enough. And I want to say close. like, you can get your air quality in check too. Right. But you also, if you don't have your diet in check, you're not drinking, you know, clean water or enough water, et cetera, you're probably still not going to feel, you know, uh, the best that you can feel. So I think it's it's really this this three prong approach of yeah. eating good, drinking good, you know, and breathing good. And it's like um, crazy part for me is obviously the breathing good aspect is like no one's talking about it. Yeah, you know, no one's doing anything about it. And and that's what's really led us down this path where how many people are sick and and didn't realize. I mean, you were sick. You thought it was the trees. You thought it was everything else but the house, right? And so. How do we get from that point to a better awareness so that we're not getting to that level of being sick, potentially causing irreversible damage that we can't get out of? And so that's, you know, kind of the mission that I'm on right now. Yeah. Do you have a nonprofit that's working on this? I do. I have a, a 501c3 called Change the Air Foundation, and it is working on policy reform. We actually passed a law in Illinois recently, which is really exciting. Uh, we have many, many states to go and many phases of laws to pass. But, um, you know, we started this two years ago and like it's been a juggernaut of success, educating the public, you know, working on policy reform. We also have this amazing research uh, paper come out called we call it the policy brief. Uh, if you go to change the air foundation dot org, you'll, you'll see it under the policy section. You should read that because it is the first document that really helps establish that mold's not just an allergy. It's not just about asthma. Yeah. Like there's multi-system detriments that happen to the human body that really haven't, you know, they've been buried in different medical journals, but really weren't in a clear, concise place. Coincidentally, after we dropped that policy brief later on that same year, uh, the NIH dropped their one paper and it looked like they took some things out of there. Uh, I, I can't confirm that, but it looked very similar. Their one page is now talking about multi-system uh, dysfunction that oh, it causes. Really? So it's, you know, so if we can lead by example, which is kind of the, the whole point of this organization, we want to lead by example, we want to educate people, and we want to really educate not only the public, but also the government. I mean, the government has to understand that this is a public health crisis and that laws need to be in place to protect people. And we talked earlier about how difficult it is for people from a money standpoint. Well, they need the proper resources to be able to actually handle the problem. I mean, if you think it's just bad in people's homes, I mean, I've already alluded to that, you know, 50 to 80% range. It's horrible in military housing. It's horrible in schools. You know, don't even get me started on Section 8 housing, right? I mean, if we look at all these different things, we want a society that can thrive. You know, a, a tide lifts all boats, right? And so right now, if we have a sick population, we're going in that direction. How are we going to you know, thrive? How are our kids and grandkids going to grow up in a world uh, with the same opportunities that we have? Um, you know, historically, the life expectancy from generation to generation would go up. Yeah. Right? It actually went down yeah. in our generation, which tells us, you know, as we're sitting here, as, as, as we're mother and father of kids, it tells us that our kids are not going to have the same chance if we keep this up that we have right now. And so we have to do something about this. And, you know, it's, it's one thing for me to go out and fix people's homes one house at a time and get to work with amazing people like you and some of the celebrities that I've been able to work with. But that's not enough. I mean, you know, yeah, you, yeah. you can give me a pat on the back for that. Great. But at the same time, if we don't solve this systemically through the work that Change the Air Foundation is doing, we don't really have a fighting chance because, as you can see, this is, it's everyone's oblivious to how, how problematic this really is. Yeah. I went from like once I got sick, when I realized it was mold, it's so funny because when I first started my podcast, I was like, I'm going to use this podcast and like interview experts and try and figure out what the root cause, like why can I only eat meat or I like am inflamed and psychotic, like what's going on with me? And one of the first episodes I had was on mold. It was like episode two or three that was on mold. And I remember being like, wow, that sounds bad, but that's not, that has nothing to do with me. Right. Like it wasn't a conversation like, oh no, this is a, like an epidemic and it's a problem in most buildings. 
it was, well, some people get really sick and these are the symptoms. And I was like, yeah, but like food can cause those symptoms and other things can cause those symptoms too. Right. And then I got sick in Miami and I went from like looking at mold, like something you scrub off the shower tiles because it's like something you remove, right? And ignore to being like, oh, that's poisoning. That's poisoning us. Yeah. Like my little girl was so sick. She had bronchitis all the time. And I was like, that should just be a cold. She shouldn't just get a cold and then it turns into bronchitis and lasts for a month. Literally. Like that that's not what's supposed to happen. 